It's growing season, y'all. But did you know black and brown people across the world are reconnecting to their roots and redefining their relationships to the land by growing and farming, gardening and farming. <laughs> and Black Gardener Talk is dedicated to sharing those voices and to inspire all people of color, maybe even some that don't look like us, to grow by any means necessary. But sometimes we just need our own safe space to talk. Good morning, I'm Kamani and Koo, and this is Black Gardener Talk. And my guest today is Marcus Thomas. So let's get right into it, y'all. Um, share this out. Tell the people um, what's going on. This is Black Gardener Talk. All right. Let me get Marcus in the room. Here we go. What's up, world? Thank y'all for joining us this morning. Wake up. Hey. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. What's going on with you? I am doing great, man. I'm blessed. I'm alive. I'm happy. The sun is out. Yeah, it's God nice. Is good. It's nice today. It's not. I mean, it's still a little cold in D.C., but um, it's not bad. I can I can handle it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's about it's creeping up in the fifties today, um, but I'll take this over any thirty degree weather. Uh, <laughs> you right. <laughs> Me too. No snow and all that stuff, and wind. We had a lot exactly. of winds lately. Yes. Uh, yesterday, to the last two days it was very windy up here. Mm -hmm. Um, but it seems to like kind of calm down a little bit now, so. So good. Okay, let's get into it. So, um, what was your first memories of gardening? Let's start right there. Well, um, that that started a long, long time ago. <laughs> um, I want to say when I was around five, six years old, because I grew up on a small farm. Okay. So I was, I always, I was always around it. Um, I remember my first experiences were um, taking care of baby chicks. Okay. You know, so I had to, my grandfather and grandmother gave me a, a cardboard box okay. and I had to put some newspaper on the bottom <laughs> as to take care of the chicks, feed them, give them water. And, um, you know, so I was always around them, my grandparents growing stuff. We had pigs, we had chickens, uh, we had big coconut trees, bay leaf trees, like different things that would plant. So um, I would say at a, a very young age, around five, so. Since I was born, um, I was in it, you know. So it's it's always been a part of me. Um, so okay. yeah, that's that's where it, it all started. And was that in Trinidad or was that in the states? <laughs> yeah, that was in Trinidad. That was in Trinidad. Um, I grew up there, um, and when I was twenty, then I migrated here to the states. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Who taught you how to garden? Because like when we got to the states. Well, um, I already knew, I, I already knew um, how to garden from being in Trinidad. So, you know, my parents, my grandparents, they taught me how to do it back there. Um, coming over here, I didn't initially start gardening. Um, I started it about five years ago because, okay. um, you know, I had that desire, that passion mm -hmm. to, to keep doing it. And um, I was able to find a a garden close to my house, a community garden, and I started there and then um, started the one here at the gym. So, um, you know, I've learned a lot from a lot of people. Um, you know, like as I said, growing up in Trinidad, the climate is different. So we only have two seasons, the wet and the dry season. Okay. So it was more of learning how to adapt to New York City. You know, it's snow, it's spring, it's not always warm. And... I had to figure out that tomatoes don't like to be in the cold and peppers don't like the cold and lettuce don't like the sun. They don't like to, you know, That's true. they don't like to, to chill in the, in the summer. So, you know, I had to learn all of that stuff. And, you know, a lot of it comes, um, it's a spiritual thing for me. It's not just planting, you know, putting a seed in the ground. It's a spiritual thing, um, you know, being Christian and, you know, we think of the Bible and the first chapter we talked about, you know the first the first um, book we talked about um, God putting um, Adam and Eve 
in a garden. Oh, okay. You know, so it's it's like it's it's more of a spiritual thing for me too. You know, it's like he could have put them anywhere. You know, but he chose a garden for those who believe. He chose a garden to do it. So it has a very strong connection for me in that in that aspect. Okay. And that's why one of your um, Instagram names is was eating, eating of Earth, right? Eden, Eden, yes, Eden on yeah. Earth. Um, because you know it's Eden. It was described as a beautiful place. It, it was trees. It was I could imagine what it looked like, and um, you know, Adam and Eve was put there to take care of it, and um, you know, and we know eventually what happened, oh, yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it was just it's, it's just a, a place where they walked and talked with God, where they commune with Him, where they um, they experience his, his love. And you know, you look at a garden, and it people don't understand how powerful a garden is. There's so much you can learn from there. So many life lessons you can learn from there. There's so many things that happen in the garden that. It, you know, it's like you, you take a, a little seed mm -hmm. and then it turns into this big plant and then you get more fruit and then you get more seeds. Yes. So it's it's, it's like a continuous um, cycle. thing that happens. Yeah, it's a continuous cycle that that never ends, <laughs> you know? So, you know, it, it's so powerful, like uh, gardening and, and it, it brings you back to earth and it's it, you know, the soil and, and you look at the beneficial aspect that, that everything in the garden gets, you know, so it's not just one thing benefiting. It's, 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 it's things helping each other. Yeah. I, I you know, agree. we need the bees, we need all of that stuff. I definitely agree. I, I would say gardening saved my life. Um, and I might not be here if it wasn't for gardening um, that happened a few years mm -hmm. ago. So I think it's a very powerful, powerful, powerful thing. Um, let's talk about this location because I mentioned it in my little um, plug to kind of get people to come in. You you growing in an un, right. uh, unusual well, I wouldn't say an unusual location, but a different kind of right. location. Talk about this whole green fitness or green fitness as a, I think that's what you're calling it. You happen to have a garden by a so, gym. Talk about that and how that came right. about. So, so the gym, the name of the gym is Green Fitness Studio. And um, about five years ago, I decided to start a garden. There was an outside lot that they had on the rooftop, and I started to start the garden there. So it, it's on the rooftop, as you can see. I'm actually on there right oh, now. Right. You see? So this is where I'm standing right now. Oh, okay. So this is the new, the new section that they gave me. Okay. Um, and the, other, the previous spot I have, I could actually take you over there real quick. So you can see that, you know, in New York, we don't have a lot of land. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we need space to grow. We need to find space to be creative. And this is the other section where the, the garden used to be. Okay. So as you can see, I have beds here, and we have the gym, which is right here. That's truly grow by any means necessary. Um, yeah. So when the people come into the gym, did they go past the garden or you had to come out to the rooftop and kind of get some air and then see the garden? How, how is that? So you, once you come in the gym, because it's on the property, um, you can, um, there's, because it's the outside area, um, you can, people come out and exercise, they do yoga there, you know, so the garden was right there for them, um, you know, and they, they love coming there, coming to, to eat and doing different things like that. So once you come through the gym, um, you have access to the garden. Okay. That's mm -hmm. what's up. I, love, I like that green fitness studio. Um, go get your workout on and then get a salad from out the yard of the garden. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely feeling that. Um, what was your first garden mistake? Talk about that. Did you have any mistakes when you first started this garden? Whether it was getting that that space at the gym or growing that um those potatoes in the cold weather. Well, I've 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 made some mistakes, a lot of mistakes um, with gardening. Um, I would say it's more of a learning experience, you know, because like as I said, I had to adapt to the different um, 
you know, climate coming here. So things that I used to do back in Trinidad, some of it may have worked, but not all of it. So, you know, it was challenging for me to understand now. Now I had to really get in depth into each plant and what their needs were for this climate. So, for example, I remember one time I was um, I was watering peppers. I had a bunch of peppers, and all of a sudden the leaves are turning yellow. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, you know, and I went online and checked it out, and they said peppers don't like a lot of water. So I stopped it for like a week. Next thing you know, the peppers are back up, leaves are green again, you know. So different things I had to learn, you know, like tomatoes, you know, certain fruits, uh, certain vegetables that didn't like, you know, the cold weather and the timing of everything. That, that's also very challenging because now that we live in a world where it could be like this today and then tomorrow it's snowing, you know. So right. to me, it's... To me, it's easier growing from summer into spring than from spring into the summer because the the spring into summer, there's so many changes that's happening, and you got to look at the last frost. And if if you don't get that right, then your plants are gonna die because you thought, oh, this was supposed to be the last frost, but I put them out, and <laughs> you know, next thing you know, your plants looking all droopy. droopy. And you're like, what happened? They're running outside. You know, so, I've, I tend to run outside and put buckets over top of everything. But right now, I'm not. I'm currently only growing the stuff that's been there since the wintertime, which is kale. And um, this right. asparagus are popping up. But I haven't planted any, okay. anything else um, out there but the kale and the, the cabbage. And those have buckets on All it right. um, for the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so it's it, it, it's a lot. It's a learning experience, and I'm still learning. You know, I look at a lot of different gardeners, and um, I I try to take what I can. You know, I always, you know, give thanks to God because that's where I get my wisdom from. Yeah. And um, you know, I remember one time I and this this was a life lesson I learned also. I remember one time um, there was a point where there were rodents, or mm -hmm. rats, or mice that would come in the garden. And I remember seeing it, and I remember where they were hiding. <laughs> and um, I had all my kale and everything was coming up. I had it in the greenhouse. It was looking good, ready to, to take the Trader Joe's <laughs> itself. And I didn't um, take care of the rats. One day I came back, all my kale. I didn't know rats like healthy food like that. But they ate everything. Oh, no. And they were hungry. <laughs> they were hungry because, you know, New York rats, you know, they all about the pizza, oh, yeah. the slice, and <laughs> the stuff. But these rats, they were like, listen, we got a guy up here. He got some good kale. Let's go have a Well, you know, they got they those, all my those kale. big rats up there, so maybe they thought they were going to go on a yeah. diet and eat the green. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so they can run fast. They're like, let's <laughs> Right, they're like, let's change it up. Let's 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 go on a plant based diet. So they ate everything, and you know, for me, it was about. It, it's a very important lesson for life, also, where it's like there are things that we see, there are red flags that we see around mm -hmm. us, and if we don't address them, they it could be detrimental to us. Yes, you know. So that was one thing I know. So um, thank God, this last past year, and now there's no rodents. I made sure. You only coming up here to eat no none of my stuff, <laughs> none of it, you know. So I put things in place to to, to stop that from happening. That's was uh, from mistake to first garden success. What was your first garden success here in New York on that rooftop? Um, you know, we we didn't have um, beds yet, um, and it was just a a thin layer of soil that was very bad. So we had to put some um, gardening cloth over it and put some soil. And uh, we planted lettuce, um, lettuce first, and um, lettuce and zucchini and radishes and fat soy. And, uh, you know, just seeing it happen, just seeing it grow was exciting to me. It made me very happy because it's like, okay, this is the beginning, you know, so 
it, it's working, you know, so it can be done. And, you know, being able to, to see that and be able to, you know, pick lettuce and just take home and make a salad. And it, it's so refreshing to, to plant seed. Yes, it's going to take some time, but then to reap a harvest. And, you know, reaping is always fun because it's like, yo, I get to eat. Yes. I get to, to partake in this good food <laughs> that I've been blessed with, you know. So just, just that process of, of, of planting the seed, taking care of it, waiting, and then um, harvesting. It, it, was, it was beautiful. That's what's up. How do the gym members feel about you growing food on there? Are they like, do they, they stop you when they see you come into the gym and then go into the garden <laughs> and say, hey, I want to do that. Oh, hey, can I get some of that lettuce or can I get some of those peppers? How do they... Um, how do they view you when you come to the gym? So it's funny because uh, one of the coaches, he calls me the farmer. Okay. And, um, you know, it's, to me, it's an educational piece. And um, I've never heard of a gym that has a, a full-blown vegetable garden in it here in New yes. York. So it was a first for a lot of people. And they, you know, they really were blown away by it because they came outside and they've seen tomatoes, they've seen cucumbers, they've seen peppers, they've seen stuff that they buy in the grocery store, all fresh. And for a lot of them, it was just like, like, wow, is this even possible? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got a lot of questions. I've had people come in, help me out and actually grow stuff themselves. Um, and a lot of the food that that I've planted. I've never sold any of it. Um, we have gotten a lot of food last year and that's based on like, uh, my, my best friend and I, we have a nonprofit organization and we feed and clothe the homeless and the needy. And, um, that fuels the garden that, that organization is a 501 C three organization, um, based here in New York and that fuels the garden. So whenever there's a harvest, you know, we usually just give food away. So people are excited about that because it's like, hey, we get fresh food. You know, I tell them, come help out. Come be, a, you know, come help out and, mm -hmm. you know, bring your Ziploc bag <laughs> and you'll be able to get some peppers and stuff like that. So they, they love it and they love learning about food. A lot of people don't know where food comes from or don't know that, yeah, there's lettuce seeds, like they're sweet potato slips. Like they don't know how these things grow. And... When you speak to them about it, you know, it, they're fascinated by it because they're like, wow, I didn't know that you could grow a potato this way or I didn't know that you could grow lettuce this way or carrots. People think that carrots, you know, grew on a tree. <laughs> people, yeah, it's, it's, and, it, and it's, it's interesting because people, they really don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a way of educating them and also encouraging them to say, hey, you know what, if you got a... Uh, backyard or if you got balcony. um old space about mm -hmm. it's like hey put some pots down get some soil you know figure out what you want to do figure out what you want to grow and 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 give it a shot you know do it you know it 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 it, it can be done if i could do it here on a rooftop here in, in new, york new york city, city. <laughs> it can be done. <laughs> you can do it anywhere, as they say. If you can make it in New York, exactly. you can do it anywhere. And you have made it exactly. in New York. So, folks, you can do it anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Exactly. I'm loving it. I exactly. used to think, like, pineapples grow on trees. And, like, you pick them from the trees. So, I'm still learning as well. You know? it's, it's funny you say that because... I had a conversation with a friend of mine yesterday about pineapples because I started growing it in my apartment because um, I have, what I would do is I would grow seedlings there and then bring them here to the gym. So um, I started, you know, propagating a pineapple um, top and I was talking to them about it and he was like, yeah, so the pineapple it comes out on the tree and I was like, no. He's like, how does it grow? And I explained to him, it looks like the aloe plant a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, it, it looks, it has those spikes and you know, so I explained it, and at the end, he was like, wow, I didn't even know. You know? The carrots so, um, it's good to educate from the tree, people. though. That's crazy. <laughs> the carrots. <girl>. I, <laughs> yeah, people, it's, it's, 
because they really don't they really don't know. You know, if you if you're not into gardening and if you're used to just going to the grocery mm-hmm. store, getting your food, you have no idea where it comes from, you have no idea how it grows, then you know, you're thinking, you know, peppers grow below the ground or something. You know, it's it, but when you enlighten them and you show them and you tell them like, hey, this is how it grows. This is the seed, and this is what it turns into. It, it's a beautiful yes. thing. I believe it is a beautiful thing. Uh, I t- help kids at my school where I work at, and they're always amazed. Um, one of the things they love to grow is snap peas. And so they was like, oh, can oh, we yeah. grow some snap peas again? Yeah. And they really, really love yeah. the snap peas. And peas, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't know, like, the peas was in the pod. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'll right. eat them just mm-hmm. right off the thing like that, but I didn't know, like, peas were in a pod. So that was my um, yeah. challenge um, <laughs> when I started growing the pod. When I was started growing the pineapples, I was like, I'm going to have a big-ass tree in my backyard and all these pineapples are going to come on here. Maybe I shouldn't do this. And then with the peas, I was like, where's the little peas? Because I like little peas like the peas. And I was like, right. where the little peas? Mm-hmm. I see these little these little um little things that got something in it, but where the peas? So that was a challenge yep. for me too, you know what I'm saying? So I'm always learning and I'm mm-hmm. amazed at how everything grows. I'm actually growing the horseradish now. Been growing horseradish for a while. Oh, okay. And um I'm amazed that oh, nice. that is a root vegetable and I didn't know it was a root vegetable. Yeah. One I didn't know where horseradish came from. I'm not gonna tell you where <laughs> I thought it came from, but <laughs> That it came from a horse. Yeah, it's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> but no. <laughs> oh my god! So yeah, if you don't oh, know, boy. you don't know. You gotta learn and, and, and educate. Right. And I think it's all about educating yourself on uh, with gardening and mm-hmm. educating more people. And when you educate more people, yes. then I believe then they have more respect for the gardening, and then they wanna. Um, yeah. have a garden. Green Thumbs is cracking up crying. I'm actually crying because, yeah, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> but what advice would you give a brand new gardener that's starting out? Um, Wow. I would say first, keep it simple. Um, You know, there's a lot of things we see on social media when it comes to gardening and people are buying all these things and all these fancy things and you feel like you have to have it. And, um, you know, so, so to me, it's, it's first educating yourself on what you want to do, as in what you want to mm-hmm. plant. Educate yourself on soil. You know, educate yourself on feeding the soil. What could you do to feed the soil? Because that is what, in turn, feeds the plant. Mm-hmm. You know, when you, you know, I, I, I put a lot of compost um, in, my, in my soil. I get it from this place called BK Rot. Let me shout out BK Rot. They got the best compost here in Brooklyn. They're about half a mile away from here. And, um, you know, so learning these things will help you as you move forward. You know, don't just go in and just buy everything and seedling trays and, and, and all that stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. That stuff is fine. However, if you got styrofoam cups, you could plant in styrofoam cups. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So you don't have to break the bank to, you know, get, you know, things started. You know, so it, it, it's all about keeping it simple, knowing what you want to do, knowing what you want to plant, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and also leave yourself open to, to different things happening. You know, sometimes you may plant a seed and it wouldn't sow. It wouldn't, um, it wouldn't germinate. You know, sometimes you will do certain things and it, didn't, it wouldn't work out. So be open to that and know that that's okay. That is okay. That's how you learn. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it. Yes, it's disappointing if you you because you get excited as a as a new yeah. gardener. You like, mm-hmm. yeah, I want to plant everything, or and then everything. you see, right? One seed comes, you know, germinates, and you're like, what happened? What did I do wrong? Or, you know, so always think of it as a learning experience because, like I say, we all still learning. Okay. You know, um, so keeping it simple and 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 most of all, just have fun doing it. You know, enjoy it, you know, and, and enjoy it. Yeah. Do you think one of the biggest hurdles is money? You think people think it costs money to garden, and so that's why they might not do it? 
I do believe that that has a role to play in it um, because depending on where you are, you know, if you have to buy soil, different things like that, it's not cheap. For example, um, this gym is in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Okay. And if you go to one of the stores that they have here, sorry, in Bushwick, if you go to one of the stores here in Bushwick, you could pay up to $10 for a bag of soil that you would get at Home Depot for four ninety nine, three dollars $3. You know what I mean? So, you know, a lot of people would go in and see that, like, that $10, $10 for a bag of soil? You know, so, again, it comes from educating yourself, Googling where could I get free soil or where could I get cheap soil or where, you know, Home Depot, okay, I could get a bag of soil for three fifty. You know, and, and um, you know, you look at, I see now with inflation and everything, you go to a lot of those Home Depots and stuff, and their seedlings are expensive now. You pay 4 or $5 for one seedling when you could buy a pack Jeez. of seeds and grow it yourself for that same price. Mm -hmm. Or less you than. Know, so, so money, right, exactly. So, you know, money, that's, that's why I always try to, I'm always scouring the streets of Brooklyn. <laughs> Um, I have bed frames here that I use to use as trellises that I've found on the streets that people were throwing out. Um, containers I've seen outside. Um, I started this year growing potatoes in, in burlap bags. And I was able to find a, a coffee spot not too far from the gym. And they were like, come and take all the burlap bags you want. You know, so there's there's ways in which you could, you know, prevent yourself from spending a lot of money. So like so like here yeah, I have all the burlap bags mm -hmm. and I'm growing I'm growing potatoes, um potatoes in them. So, you know, it's it's it, yes, money could be an issue, but you could get around that. Okay. You know, you you could you could find find creative ways in doing things and um you know it it it's it, it, you know, growing in, in tubs or growing, you know, you don't have to buy all the fancy stuff. You know, I have one little grow light in my house, one. Um, I refuse to buy <laughs> a whole setup. I'm, I'm not going to do that because I have a south, I have two south facing windows in my apartment, so I'm getting a lot of sun. And, um, you know, so it's, it's so many different ways you could use things. Um, you know, like as I said, Brooklyn people throw away a lot of stuff. Container. Plastic so, containers, food containers. Yep. So, you know, you could plant in that. You know, you, you buy, say, some mushrooms and the container you get mm -hmm. it in, you throw some soil in that and you put you put some seeds in it. That's what you know, so so you could definitely work around around. So that. we have um first time caller, they say <laughs> fellow Nigerian. They say, How do you address the soil weight growing on the rooftop but still maintain? Is that an issue? So that's not an issue here. Yeah, that's not an issue here um, because I don't have, if you look here, I have these planters over here, right, those white planters on each side, and I have these grow bags that I use, All right? So the foundation is pretty strong. So um, as you can see, it goes all the way down to the end on that side. Mm -hmm. So I could I could lay it out where it's not everything on one in one particular area, and I could spread it out like that. So it's it's not it's never been an issue here with the weight and the soil. Um, so I say like it's, it's it's not a lot, but it's also a lot in in a way, you know. And the same person Andre says, what about moisture since poor and peat dry so quickly? Do you have issues? so. So I don't, I don't, that's, that's, that's another thing. I don't usually use a lot of cocoa core or peat. Um, you know, over the past four years, all I've been doing is um, adding compost to the soil. So, you know, I don't go out and buy that stuff. Like, um, you know, uh, the, the seedling mix that I get usually to start of the year, that may have some in it. Um, but I don't actually put that in my beds or, in growing containers. It's usually just the soil, and I get, like as I said, the local spot, the DK uh, rot that gives me compost that I, I usually get from there, and I just mix it too, and every year I just add compost. 
every year I just add compost, some compost add. And then after a while, the soil gets really rich. It gets very, um, you know, it, it, it has a lot of nutrients in it. Um, so that's, that's how I usually, that's what I usually do. That's what's up. I hope, Andre, that answers your question. I was listening to the radio the, the other day, um, the Karen Hunter show, and this guy, they were talking about um, farming and gardening, and this guy that was on there said there was only about 60 growing seasons left, and that was due to the soil being depleted, and then we're talking about soil. Uh, what's your take mm -hmm. on that? He said we need to find better ways to enhance the soil. Like most people are not rotating their crops, or people that don't look like us mm -hmm. are not rotating the the crops as they right. should. So one year they right. keep growing the same corn in that same field, and over time that soil turns into bad soil. So there's no room to grow any more food in that spot. So right. what's your take on that? And and you know before I say anything, you know my whole thing is take care of what you can take care of for yourself first, mm -hmm. right? You know, a lot of those big farmers and, you know, like they use methods that, um, yes, that deplete the soil of nutrients, that really disrupt everything. And like you say, you could plant something one year and then next year they, they can't plant anything because they, the soil is depleted, you know, because of the farming method. Um, you know, like as I said, um, I follow this guy, um, Charles Dowding, from um, England, and his um, he's about he's, he talks about the no till, no dig mm -hmm. um, garden, and um, what I've noticed, what I've done too, is, is is basically like I said, I keep adding compost every year, and that keeps the soil. I don't dig, I don't um, you know really like mix. If I have set like the beds down already, like all I do is just add stuff on top, and you know we all have to find better ways to garden, better ways to keep the soil. You know, I don't know, you know, like the guy said, a certain amount of number of growing season. You know, growing season. I think like, he was referencing how the soil is getting depleted. So if we keep depleting the soil, then we're not going to have any more growing season because there's going to be nowhere to grow. I think that's how I take right. it. I still got to do more research um, on it. But it was funny because I, I, I chimed in and I'm going to um, – I talked my way into um, – being on this this program with this young lady and she's going to do a weekly thing about growing food and mm -hmm. so I'll be like kind of like co-hosting her and Karen Hunter is a big name I'm not sure if you listen to her right. but I was like what you want me to come on and talk with you and and, <laughs> and guide some storylines uh, with you about gardening but yeah it was I think it was in reference to um the depletion of soil and, and if we right. keep doing that yeah. it's going to be nowhere to grow yeah, and, and it's, it, you know, it, at the end of the day, too, it, it boils down to money. And they're trying to make money. And they're trying to make a profit. And, um, but, you know, the soil is being punished for that, you know. So, but there's so many different ways, you know, people who do organic gardening, I believe that is becoming more a thing. Um, even rooftop gardening, people are starting to do that. And with that, they're taking care of the soil and making sure that, um, it has all the nutrients in it for the plant. You know, it's not about just throwing um, fertilizer or, you know, and I'm not knocking that. But for me, it's, it's like the, the base, the foundation starts with compost and, and matter. And, it, you know, you look at, there's another guy, I forgot his name, you know, he's talking about, uh, he used to use a lot of wood chips to cover his soil. Um, and he, he was saying that, you know, he felt like he was doing too much work in the garden. And he, he was praying about it. He went to God about it, and God told him, look at the forest. Mm -hmm. And we see that the ground of the forest is always covered, always covered in leaves, always covered in... You don't see anybody going in the forest, putting down, you know, fertilizer. <laughs> Nobody's going in there, putting down bone meal. Nobody's going there, you know, because it's, it's coming from the plant. So he adopt, it adopted that, that method of, okay, let me start covering the soil. And that could be with covering with compost, covering it with leaves, um, covering it with, um, you know, anything that would decompose after a while, you know, because you're protecting the soil. So, you know, it, it's hard to tell a, 
a big farmer who owns 10 acres to do that, to do it that way, because it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of time, mm-hmm. and it will be more expensive to do, you know. So, you know, the best thing is to do for yourself, try your best to, to make it as best as possible for yourself, and then hopefully we will see the bigger changes happen. Okay, and then more growing seasons. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we get more growing seasons. That's right. Um, Life Inspire said, "Have you either of you attempted hydro plant planting?" I haven't. Uh, I haven't. Um, I just, I just love being in the soil, and and I, you know, it's it's something that I grew up with. Um, if I will ever do hydro planting, I I have no idea. Maybe in the future. But uh, for now, it's basically, you know, soil, dirt, compost, give me some seeds, let me get my hands dirty, let's go some seeds. Well, it's, well, there's also this hydro and then there's aquaponics too. So I have right. tried yeah. aquaponics. I'm going to have a small aquaponic mm-hmm. um, machine in the house, but that's as far as I've, mm-hmm. I've gone. But it's like a small... Um, gift that I was gifted for Christmas gift, and um, okay. yeah, so yeah, I've tried aquaponic but not hydroponic, and they are two. They kind of like the same, but they are different in a way. Right, and with the aquaponics, um, there's actually a community garden not too far from here also. That, um, you know, they have a whole setup where they have this whole pool and they grow stuff in it. They have a huge, like, fish container where the, the you know the water comes in and it uh, adds nutrients to the soil to the um, water, um, but I've never done um, the aqua. I've never done that. Also, um, you know it it takes a lot and it could be expensive. Um, you know, but if that's something that works for you, you know, because it works for people who may not have an outdoor space, you know, to do it. And a lot of companies now are getting into it where you see them having these huge warehouses with just, you know, aquaponics, all that stuff happening. So it is something that's growing. Um, but again, if it works for you because of where you're situated, because where your house is or apartment is, that's totally fine too. The end goal is to grow, is food. To go, grow food. That's what's grow up. Food. And expand that, uh, <laughs> that growing season from 62 unlimited. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Where do you get your seeds from? So uh, there's a few companies that I've used um, in the past. Um, I've, I've gotten stuff from Eden Brothers. Okay. Um, I've gotten stuff from Burpee. I've tried a, a bunch of different ones. And then there's one, um, I believe it's in North Carolina, Baker Creek. Um, I've used some of their seeds and some other different seeds from Etsy and stuff like that, some local stuff. Um, but what I started doing last year was seed saving. So I I went into that and I started collecting seeds from a lot of the stuff that I grew so that this year I wouldn't have to purchase a lot of seeds. And that has helped me tremendously. So, you know, it's, it's something also that people can look into. It's like, hey, you know, you grow tomatoes. It's like keep a few just for seeds and then next year you'll have seeds to grow. That's what's up. How do you, how do you yeah. decide what you're going to grow? I mean, you have the gym and you're growing at the gym are you growing mostly for yourself or are you growing for the people um in the community as you said earlier how do you know what you want to grow bro yeah how do you how you decide so so the garden is not just for me you know god has blessed me with it and for me i have to be a blessing to others with Mm -hmm. it and you know, with people coming and helping and, you know, I, I you know, I tell them, hey, you, you come, you help, you partake, you're able to get free food. Um, you know, so it's, it, it, um, you know, it's, it, it's really, um, now I'm forgetting, I'm losing a little <laughs> track. I'm sorry about that. It's okay. Um, can you repeat the question again? Was, How do you decide what you're going to grow? Right. Whether it's for yeah. you, the so, community, the people at the gym, are you doing surveys? Are you taking surveys when these people come to the right. gym? <laughs> <and say with laughs> <vegetables>? No. <laughs> no, 
No, there's no <laughs> surveys. Um, you know, I just grow. I just grow a lot of food. Um, there's food that I don't really like a lot that I still grow, but I know that other people love to eat. For example, okra. I'm not a big fan of okra by itself. Steam it, fry it. It's not my thing. <laughs> but, however, there's a dish in Trinidad that we call kalaloo that we use okra for. So I would put it in that. I'm totally fine with it in that. But I still grow it because I know people love okra. So it's not just about me. You know, there are different foods that I would grow that, like as I said, that I'm not big, you know, really fond of. I'm not a big fan of zucchini. But I still grow it, you know, so I'll, I'll be able to give it away and, you know, to somebody who, who loves it. That's what's... You know? so, Are you growing Kalaloo mm-hmm. there? I grow Kalaloo in my yard. Um, yes. I'm, I'm actually growing... I'm going to grow some this year because um, I have the Kalaloo and I have the Amaranth. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm growing those two. One is like a reddish, mm-hmm. uh, that reddish that. one and the other one is green. Right. So... I'm going to grow both of them this year. Um, so that's something I'm always looking forward to. Yeah. Um, you know, you got you to gotta love a good cow. My, my stepbrother is Trinidadian, so when I grew the emeralds, oh. when I grew the emeralds, I was showing off because he, 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 oh, okay. he has a balcony <laughs> garden, and he didn't know where to get the seeds from, but someone gave me happened to give me the seeds, and when they um, grew... I was taking oh, all these man. photos and I was sending them by text messages and I was like, "Do you know what this is?" And then he was like, "Where do you get that from? You're not growing that in your yard." And I was like, "I." Ain't and, and you know what's interesting in Trinidad, what what is called Kalalu here, we call it Baji. Mm-hmm. So we don't call it Kalalu in Trinidad. In Trinidad, we call it Baji. We have another thing that we call Kalalu. It's like a bush that we we get from a uh, a tuber called dashi, mm-hmm. and we use the stem and the leaves to make kalalu like that back home. But baji, which people call um, the amaranth up here, that's what they use to make the kalalu up here. Okay, that's what's up. Do you have a favorite plant or vegetable or fruit that you like to grow? What is your favorite? You don't like okra. You're not a fan of zucchini. <laughs> what is your favorite um, thing that you like to grow? Hmm, that's a good one. Watermelon. Um, I'm growing watermelon here. Um, I love growing tomatoes. Um, I had a whole bunch of it last year. I love growing pumpkins because I eat a lot of pumpkins. Um, I, I I wish I could grow mango. <laughs> that's that's one of my I favorite fruits. Uh, I wish I could do that here, but because of the climate, it's, it's challenging. Um, but I this year I'm going to introduce. I have a fig a fig tree that I'm going to be planting. You know, bring it out here. Um, strawberries, um, like I said, watermelon, um, cantaloupe. Um, but yeah, stuff like tomatoes. Um, you know, I enjoy growing that too. I love that because I, I'm, I'm always eating that stuff. Speaking of watermelons, cantaloupes, and pumpkins, you need a lot of space. Now, when that started growing, did the people in the gym was like, "What the hell is going on?" So, <laughs> so a lot of people, when I told them I grew watermelon and pumpkins, they didn't, they didn't mm-hmm. believe because, you know, they they're thinking. That's the stuff you just get in the grocery yeah. store. Like, you ain't growing that stuff here. And um, I did it for two years. And last year, I had the pumpkin growing. Like, I had it on a wall that was climbing on a wall. And um, it, it was a big pumpkin, a Jardale pumpkin. That's what they call it. And the outside of it was blue. And the inside of it was very orange. Um, so it, it's fun to see people's reactions. When they came in and they look on the ground and it's like, whoa, wait, 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 is that a watermelon? It's like, yes, we grow watermelon. Here. You know, so um, it's it's always a beautiful thing to see their reaction when they see these things here. Because, you know, watermelon, some varieties do need a lot mm-hmm. of space. But again, because I'm on a rooftop, I have to find a clever way of, of growing it. So growing it on a trellis. So this year, how I'm going to grow it, I'm going to actually lay a bed frame on the ground, um, it has four legs, and I'm going to put four bags, grow bags on each corner of that, 
so that the watermelon could then grow and trellis on the bed. When the watermelon is um, it starts forming, I will put it on top of the frame so that it doesn't hang below and it doesn't touch the ground. You know, so it's just, it's just finding creative ways to do it. Okay. That's what's up, kids. I know my watermelons and cantaloupes. And, and I have a six-foot fence in my yard. And those things were growing oh, wow. over the fence into my neighbor's yard. They were everywhere. I was like, mm -hmm. whoa, I should not have done it. And then that's when I didn't know any better. So I would take the whole pack of seeds and I'll do all the seeds. So I had like <laughs> thousands, of yeah, they, thousands of milk, oh, thousands of watermelons. And I was like, oh my God. Because mm -hmm. I didn't know, you know, when you start out, you don't know all the right. time. You got to learn and grow. Then I'll put maybe two that or three true. seeds and hopefully and, and, and wish for the best. <laughs> you know, <it's>, yeah. <laughs> so it's 1145. This is the time when I do the Black Table Talk question of the week. And my question of the week is, you're a photographer, you are a fitness guru, teacher, and gardener. How do you balance all of that and still run a nonprofit? Yeah, so I'm I'm VP of the nonprofit, um, Club Adam Inc. Uh, my best friend, Tony, he's the president. And, um, you know, we feed and clothe the homeless and the needy. And that's, like, as I said, is the covering of everything else that I do. So whenever somebody, say, um, buys a fitness package from me or if somebody hires me to do photography, a lot of that, some of that money goes back into the nonprofit, you know. So, you know, I, I, I daily get up. It, it's all about, you know, God plays a very important role in my life. And, you know, without him, you know, I would be all over the place, you know, doing everything. And so, you know, he has given me gifts and talents that I use and he has shown me ways how to better prepare myself, how to better, you know, space things out so that it's not overwhelming, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, thank God I'm, I'm not, I don't have a nine to five. So, you know, I'm set, setting my schedule. I'm putting things in place as to how it would benefit me mm -hmm. um, and not have me overwhelmed, you know. So thank God the garden is right here next to where I train people, you know. So... It's not like I have to go travel somewhere else to, to tend to the garden. It's right here. So in between clients, I'm out here tending to the garden, and I go back to train clients, different things like that, you know. So, but when we, when we do feed and clothe the homeless and the needy, you know, that, that could happen anytime. You know, whenever God tells us to go out and do something, we go out and do it. So I'm, I'm grateful that I'm able to, to have that kind of freedom to do all those things, um, and, and still wake up and be happy and love what I do and not dread waking up, you know, and I don't have anything to, against nine to fives. I used to do nine to fives. Um, but, you know, that's over with and I'm loving life. I'm loving what I'm doing. I love everything that I do, you know, so it's easier to get up <laughs> and just be thankful of and, and <laughs> just, just know that I'm going to do what I love to do. Yeah, like, I would say the same. I mean, I still have a nine to five, but I know on Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's when we have garden club at the school. So I'll get really excited to go in and work on Tuesdays and Thursdays because I know <laughs> there's going to be garden club for the kids and I can and teach them mm -hmm. and everything. But have you learned any tricks or tips by growing through this whole process, growing on the rooftop or just growing in general? Do you have a favorite tip or trick that you learn along the way? Um, hmm, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite, but I've, I've, I've learned that, um, you know, one of the things that I love, enjoy doing is, um, planting different things all together. You know, there's that tendency to just say, okay, I'm going to just plant beets here. I'm going to plant lettuce here. I'm going to plant something over here. And for me now, it's like, hey, I could plant some lettuce because they, they don't have a long growing season. I could plant some of that within the beach. Now I'm saving space. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, a lot of the things we read on the seed packets and stuff like that, it will tell us about spacing and which, to me, I've, I've grown stuff and seen that, you know, uh, 
No, I should put it a little closer. That's me. You know, you know it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so in a bed, you know, for example, real quick, I could show you, like in one of the beds I have here, this around, maybe, maybe not. So, like here I have, um, as you can see, it, I have lettuce mm -hmm. here, right? I have some garlic growing here. I have some beet in between here, you know, with the lettuce and everything. So even here, I have lettuce, I have beet, I have kale. And in between the kale, I have beets growing there. I have onions also on the outside, you know. So it's, it's, it's all about, you know, it's like you want to grow some food, you know, you don't need a lot of space. You know, you could have a small container and grow multiple things in it you know so that's one of the things i enjoy i really love doing you know so yeah i would say that's my tip too when i first started i was like like you said i would throw a bunch of different seeds it together and it'd be like a big old jungle and my brother or something right come back and they'd be like, how they too close together i was like no i don't because it looks cool mine's look like a jungle and yours don't look like a jungle <laughs> you know and i like the jungle and look <laughs> And and you see, um, a lot of the sea pocket packets that we get is usually for people who have like huge spaces, commercial growers, like that's that's what they use. But having a small space, you could put things in between. You know, you could grow stuff that are tall next to things that are shorter. You know, the the stuff that are taller, you could put some plants that love shade below that. You know, so there's so many ways you could you could mix it up. And hey, you know, I'm I'm all about like as I said, keeping it simple, and you know, I just want to grow food. <laughs> so if it grows an inch apart from each other, <laughs> I'm growing it, you know? So it, it, that's, that's how it is. Now, being on the rooftop, what kind of tools are you using on the rooftop? I know, you, like, are you bringing in big shovels, little shovels, just using your hands, water hoses, um, buckets of water? Like, what types of tools and, and things are you using on the rooftop? So because the weather is still chilly, um, I usually have like a little container of water that I go into the gym, get water, come out and water some of the seedlings. Um, but I do have a hose, um, one of those um, long wands, the wand that you use. I have that. Um, I have a couple shovels, a rake, um, you know, but I don't have a lot of tools because, like as I said, because of how I do no till, no dig, I'm constantly putting compost in, so there isn't a lot of weeds that come okay. up. Okay. You know, so I'm, I'm usually, I usually have that under control. Um, but I have a broom, so, like, sometimes when the water falls, it kind of uh, collects a little bit. So I would just sweep it, sweep it away. I have a broom. and um, But other than that, um, I don't really have any big machinery or any special gadgets or or any of that. How about compost bin? Do you have compost bin up there? Or are you just buy compost? So I do have a compost bin. Uh, a person gifted it to me uh, about two years ago. And I am using that. But I also just like to um, bury stuff directly into the soil. Sure. You know, growing up in Trinidad, like we didn't have compost bins. We didn't think about putting you know, stuff in a bin. We just threw it out the backyard <laughs> and it would just it would just grow and or it would cover the soil and add nutrients to it. So to me, when I have say um when I do my meal prep and I bring in stuff like vegetable cutting, stuff like that, I would just dig like a little hole and then just cover it up and I'll just keep you know, something like that. But I do get the majority of my compost from that spot, um, BK rot that um, you know, they have a whole business there and it's on donation basis. So, um, you know, I would get like three burlap bags for like $15 mm -hmm. and it's a lot of compost. So, um, you know, I just use that to cover the top. And then as the, the year goes along, um, I'll just add a little bit more, you know, stuff like that. So, but I do definitely, um, do composting. That's what's up. On that same radio show, they talked about composting, and they talked about composting is now becoming one of the largest business in the farming um, world because grocery stores and, and different places are throwing out um, vegetables and, and, and fruits 
all the time. And the guy was like, the best advice he was given to the people who called in was to go to the grocery stores too and line up in the back and get all that stuff to do composting. Because yep. he said like some farmers pay up to uh, $50 a bag of composting. And those companies who are doing the composting is just basically going to those grocery stores and getting that compost, mm -hmm. I mean, that those vegetables for free. And then they charge people right. all that money for composting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's it's if you can, if you have the space to do it, do it. You know, um, it, it's it's you know, like I said, they have they have bins you could do it, or you could you could create one. You could go on YouTube and see how easy it is to put a compost bin together. Um, and you know, you might next need to drill drill some holes, and you know, you could set it up like that. And um, you know, but like if you have the space, you could do it. If you don't, you know. Go around, Google your, your area, wherever you live. You may have places there that produce compost that you can get, you know, for a cheaper price. Um, you know, so it's it's always about not trying to break the bank. So you know, you just Google, find ways, find things, you know, ways to do so to work around all of that. Yeah, my neighborhood this year, actually February, we just started um, a composting program. We had never had a composting program. And so they gave um, folks who wanted to opt in, like these big old bins that they put in their backyard, and then these little bins that they kept in the house. And then each week, I think it's on Mondays, they come and pick up the, the compost scraps. They take them to a location, they compost them down, and then like gardeners or farmers can go there and get that compost for cheap. So I thought that was a really, mm -hmm. a, really um, a great thing to do. Speaking of yeah. pumpkins, you mentioned pumpkins earlier, and you love pumpkins what is some of your favorite yeah. recipes for pumpkins oh so um i do a, a pumpkin mash okay. so it basically it's uh instead of, instead of mashed potatoes i would use pumpkin yeah. so i would steam it i would put it in a pot with a steamer um let it steam for a little bit um so it's like a uh not a candy yams but a candy pumpkin okay um, type recipe. So I would steam it and then I would put a little bit of butter um, and then also I don't put sugar in it. I would put like something like maple okay. syrup um, and just mash it up and um, and that's it. That's, that's... It, it, it has that nice flavor um, and depending on the pumpkin, like I said, I grew the Jardale pumpkin mm -hmm. last year and it has a slight, a slight nutty flavor. Okay. So that with the, the maple syrup, um, you know, mixed into it is just, is, is, to me, it's is delicious. That's what's up. I love pumpkin soup, and I'm a big fan of pumpkin. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I got into this year, we're actually grinding it out and then grinding it up into, like, a flour to make um, pumpkin uh, ravioli, pumpkin noodles, or whatever. Um, wow. Have you ever thought about that? I've never actually is the first time I'm hearing about it, um, but I can definitely see that ravioli. I can definitely see yeah. that happening. With taking the ravioli and then um, taking and then taking another step with the ravioli and then taking some collard greens or some kale and stuffing the ravioli with that. So you have the pumpkin kale hey, wow. um, ravioli. So mm. yeah, I've been just trying to get since wow. I've been growing. So I grow about forty five percent of my own food now. So I'm just thinking of ways to to really do it and i think mm -hmm. that's another issue that i want to contact um or, or conquer or be my mission of gardening beets is showing people okay you know how to grow the food but how do you cook the food how do you prepare sure, the food because right. that was an issue that i did have in the beginning where i, I felt like i wasted a lot of food um whereas now i'm really mm -hmm. thinking about okay how do i um harvest this how do i prepare this food Right. Totally agree. Totally agree. Cooking. I love to cook. Like I said, I do meal prepping also. So I have clients that I cook for. And some of the stuff in the garden that I harvest, yeah, I use that while I'm, um, you know, in the meal prepping. Um, but yeah, it's always fun. That's another fun thing too. Cooking and trying new recipes and finding healthy ways to, you know, cook the food. Because people think they have this notion that healthy food doesn't taste good. No, it, it, does. it does. It's just how you prepare yeah. Now that Michelle Obama um food lunch program, then that stuff did not taste good. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, one of the unique things that I did this year, and like it's it's so fun when you can be able to grow, was I actually grew collard greens, right? And then I dried those out, and I made flour, and I made a collard green bread, which was really really good. And I was surprised how wow. good that was. Yeah, I've never I have never heard of collard greens. Green, I do have a video, but I'll visit wow. I'll post that at some point in time when I feel wow. like it's is 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 ready to be like put out there. But yeah, I make collard green bread. But my I know it's twelve o'clock and I'm gonna let you go in a minute. But my last and final yeah. question is what are your future plans for your garden? So um one of the things that um I wanna do more of this year is um, be more of a blessing to people. So I'm trying to grow a lot more food so that I could probably take to, like, food pantries, you know, through our organization, Club Adam Inc. Um, you know, I want us to be able to do that. Like, you know, if it's, like, you know, a lot of homeless shelters, too, may not um, have a lot of stuff for vegans or people who do plant-based diet. So, you know, doing something like that and give it back more. Uh, so the more I can grow, the more we can give back. You know? So that's why I use the space as best as I can so that I could have as much food as I can so that we can bless those who are hungry, those who, you know, this is New York, um, and it's a tough city. And there are people who walk around, they just like you and me, they look normal, and, you know, they probably didn't eat that day, uh, you know, because they have to, to pay rent because they have, you know, rent here in, in New York. Yeah, that's another, <laughs> that's another uh, topic in itself. But, you know, this would be a blessing and to show people how easy it is to grow food. And, um, you know, that's that's one of the main things I want from here to, to just be a blessing and, you know, so... That's that's the goal. Okay, and then I have one more a follow up question. Since you do work at the gym, I mean, well, you 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 go to the gym regularly in the garden. Have you ever thought about maybe even thinking about franchising out a green space gym garden type thing um, through people? <laughs> so it's funny you ask that because I actually have plans on opening a facility. Uh, it's, my business is called Metamorphosis Fitness. And um, I want to incorporate, it, it's a holistic way of living. It, it's not just working out. Because with working out, it's mm -hmm. great, but you have to eat properly. So I, I, you know, I've already drew it out in my head and drew it out on paper as to how I want it to look. Um, you know, and there will be a garden there. There will definitely be a garden there because I want people in the gym to actually say, you know, if it's like, okay, you can rent a bed. Each month you pay like a small fee and you can plant whatever. If you need help, we'll teach you how to plant, you know. So you're getting your good workout in. And then after that, you could come out and spend an hour where you take care of your stuff, you take care of your, your flowers, whatever you plant. Um, if you have stuff to harvest, you take it with you, you know. So uh, there is plan to, to create that uh, facility. It's going to be huge. Um, it's, it's going to be big. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, like I said, it's going to be a garden here. There's going to be a food pantry there for people to come and get food for people who don't have food. A lot of the stuff that we, we grow in the garden is going to be used in the gym to actually produce good, healthy meals. You know, so um, it's, 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 it's just a – you'll see it. That's, that's, that's all I would say. Just look out for it. I love it. Just I look love out that. for it. I did. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. People now, people want to come to the room and start leaving all this good comment. You came earlier. But it is going to be on YouTube afterwards. Next week is going to be on Apple Music, uh, Podcast, Amazon, all this uh, stuff with my music open. I have a whole opening and, and closing and music and all that good stuff that goes with this um, Black Garden mm -hmm. Talk. I got a big announcement on Tuesday concerning Black Garden Talk, which I'm excited about. And I'm going to let everybody know next week. I'm not doing it on Saturday because it's my birthday. I'll be turning vampire age years old. That's what I call it. Happy, happy, blessed birthday. Thank happy you. Blessed and birthday. so next Sunday, I will be back with Mr. Matt Ross. And he's on uh, his company is Fuel, 
Fugu House um, Nursery. That's going to be on next Sunday at the same time at 11 o'clock. Um, but I thank you, Marcus Thomas, um, for coming through. Um, you blessed us with some great knowledge. If you can grow in New York, you can grow anywhere. And that's my thing when I repost this. So That is true. And, and I'm thankful. God bless you, Kimani. Thank you for having me. Um, if people, as, like you said, I you know people are coming and I wasn't able to see comments or stuff like that. Um, if you have questions, you could ask me. If you want to have questions about what I do here in the garden, what I do with um, my organization, with the organization Club Adam Inc. It's a 501c3. Can they donate? And um, yes, so they could they could hit me up, and I'll I'll give them um, the different ways they could donate. Because actually, next week we're going to be sending out um, some fundraising emails um, to help raise funds for kids who are going to college, um, and to continue the work of what we're doing, and to also celebrate um, 50th anniversary of um, Booker T. Washington. Um, high school in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, so, you know, we, we, we're we doing a lot of things and, you know, we do need money and we do need help to, to do these things. So if you want to call, um, send me a message, donate, all that stuff. How can they follow you? Drop the Instagram. So, so, so they can follow me straight here, right, on Instagram here, on this uh, page, in underscore on underscore earth zero. Um, they could also email me um, at marcusthomas at gmail.com. So that's M-A-C-Q-U-E-S, Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S, at gmail.com. Um, and our organization, we're on Facebook. So www.facebook.com forward slash Club Adam Inc. And the Inc. is I-N-C. Okay, that's what's up. I'll, I'll make sure I'll put all those links into when I repost this on YouTube later on today. Um, as well as here. But again, I thank you for joining me early in the morning. It's hard for me to get up early yes. in the morning. I'm sure you up at the break of dawn, but for me, it's a little yes. different. <laughs> um, but happy growing this year. Yes, I will be checking in. I'll be in New thank York you. soon, so hopefully maybe I can stop past the gym and the garden and see what you're doing um, yes. in person. Yes, um, yes, for sure. But yeah, have a great afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, come back next Sunday, April 10th. Now, April 10th is the next time I do Black Gardener Talk. And then look out for Tuesday when I have a big announcement concerning Black Gardener Talk that you're going to be surprised and you're going to be happy for me. And we're just going to be in this because it is a community. I want to say live your life healthy, free from negativity. And folks, we got to stay dope. All right. Peace. All right. Take care.